Hi, my name is Brian Rosenberg. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Education Revolution, the creator of the Socrates Learning Platform. So when you look at the education system today, one of the biggest challenges is really time for teachers to be able to give the kids a unique personalized learning experience. And as classroom sizes grow, the time available to teachers becomes more and more of a challenge. Increased time is focused on standardized testing and teachers are spending more time outside of the classroom preparing for the classroom time. And as a result in the classroom, and they're even working on, on preparing for future sessions while in the classroom. You still don't have a lot of time to give the kids, uh, to give them the attention that they need and to personalize the education experience. It isn't practical for them to do that. And as classroom sizes are growing at the same time, the supply of teachers continues to become more of a challenge. And one of the actual implications of COVID-19 I've read is that they are concerned that it's gonna increase teacher early retirements and make this problem even worse. So the way Socrates addresses that is that we are providing the benefit of a one-to-one -one tutor by personalizing education in real time using artificial intelligence. And we can do this across any educational topic. We've currently built out the software and the content around uh, particular topics, including math, English, and language arts for K-8, to but we are able to do this for any educational topic, either provided by first party content or content that we partner with third parties to create. The, we have tools that allow a teacher to be able to see and measure progress, to see where students need assistance, where they need help, and allow them to be able to assign topics, as well as allow them to be able to engage with those students, even in a remote environment, as we're all experiencing today. And we use gamification to make it fun and engaging for the students so that they want to use their time, their free time, continue to improve their skills, and to continue to progress through the content. And when you look at, you know, so there's a lot of solutions in, in, in education technology that are out there and many different tools that do some component of what we just talked about, but none of those solutions bring all these pieces together effectively. And that has been very clear by the current remote learning environment where schools right now are really struggling to use the technology tools that they have available to them to be able to effectively manage remote classrooms. Perhaps a tool has good educational content, but isn't engaging for the students. In other cases, it might be engaging with the students, but not truly educational, or doesn't progress them. And we have a good mix of all of those capabilities to be able to allow someone to manage either a combination of a classroom and working at home environment, or what we're experiencing today with remote learning. And probably a perfect example of that is the experience that we've been having with schools that we recently launched in Mexico. So we have a group of 45 schools that we launched in Mexico just before the schools closed a few weeks beforehand. And they have had significant growth in use of the software over the course of the last uh, several weeks since schools closed at a very high level of engagement, both in terms of the number of kids using it and the amount of time that they're spending on the software. And they're actually answering about on average in those schools, 60,000 questions per day, very high levels of engagement. The teachers are able to assign topics, to be able to engage the kids, to be able to engage with the parents, and the schools are able to know whether or not those students are using the solution of progressing, uh, which they do not have really good visibility into in most of the remote learning solutions being used throughout the, the, uh, the, the country today. So a little bit about uh, the, the executive team of the company. So myself, I have uh, exited from two previous firms that I built. Uh, Dr. Thomas is the co-founder of the company, and he was on the executive team for a company that grew to $100 million valuation. And John Emmons, our chief marketing officer, who's also on the phone with me now, um, has been on the executive team for three exits from technology companies. So all of us have experience both in building technology companies as well as exiting and making money for our investors in the process. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about the strategy of our product in the platform, and we really are truly a platform in that we are able to both deliver any type of learning content, uh, whether it be content that we create or that we partner with third parties to create, as well as the platform can be white labeled uh, and can be customized to meet the needs of a particular set of learners to teach a particular concept. So most of what we've been talking about relates to the traditional school market, and that includes private schools, public schools, and charter schools, where we are providing the content and the platform to schools and to teachers that in turn are providing it to students, and they're using it both at home 
and in the classroom in various different combinations of time. In addition, our platform can be used for adult learning, so it doesn't have to be K-12 space. And probably the most significant example of this that we have so far is that we have partnered with a company to use our artificial intelligence and gamification to become an artificial intelligence driven poker coach to help to improve the poker skills of, of, their, of their students. Now, clearly that's not something that we're gonna be offering to the traditional schools, but it's a good example of how our platform can be used with, with some UI modifications in a different market. In addition, we have the home and micro school market, markets that have been slowly growing, but we believe that the growth is going to accelerate significantly as a result of COVID-19, with home schools being parents teaching their kids from home and micro schools being small neighborhood-based schools, typically under 25 kids. And we see those as very significantly growing markets in the next few years. And we're able to tie all this together with a marketplace that allows for a school to buy additional modules of, 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 to learn from, homeschooling and microschooling customers to buy additional modules, as well as adult learning as we both first party and third party make more and more different content learning modules available in the future. So a little bit of the overview of the timeline of the company. So Socrates started as a, a part-time project for both myself and Dr. Thomas, my co-founder. We applied for a grant with the National Science Foundation, an SBIR grant. And uh, we, did, we received that grant. We were actually the first grant winner in the state of Nevada in seven years. Uh, and used that to launch the product uh, in, a, uh, in, in an initial group of schools. And we had basically a proof of concept year where we proved out the value and the capabilities of the software. And during that year, demonstrated an 18 to 34% increase in test scores for the students who use Socrates over those who didn't across a group of four schools. We also had a, had a pilot period in Mexico that led us to get three, uh, three deals directly with departments of education in Mexico, which occurred uh, late in 2019. So we have had, uh, we started actively selling the product in July of 2019 and have had good success and good traction. And a little bit more about that, about the overall market size, and then I'll get into the, uh, the, the, the traction the company has had, is you look at the overall market, I think we all aware that the education market is a very large market and it's measured in the trillions of dollars. This next number shows the education technology spend as of, uh, as of current numbers, but the reality of it is that as a result of COVID-19, we expect that ed education technology spend is gonna increase dramatically in the coming years, as a lot of school districts have realized that they don't have the right tools in place uh, to be able to accommodate uh, the remote learning environment. So we see significant growth in the spend occurring. And this last number reflects uh, the market that we believe we can capture over a period of the next five years. And you can see that the overall international market is one of the areas that we see as, as the most significant in addition to the US market and the homeschool market. And this doesn't even factor in uh, the platform opportunities that I mentioned before. So when you look at the overall traction of the company, we have about 42,000 users on the software now that grows daily. Uh, we have customers that include uh, working directly with departments of education in Mexico. We have individual schools in Taiwan, in Thailand, and in the United States. And we're also working with libraries in the United States as well. I mentioned the platform clients as the ones where we are providing uh, a platform uh, to deliver third-party content. In addition to the poker, uh, one that I mentioned earlier, we have two other arrangements. One is involving speech therapy and the other is providing social and emotional learning tools. In both those cases, they are to the K-12 audience but are not topics that are traditionally taught as part of K-12 education. Uh, we, and we do have several other major platform deals in the pipeline, including a major scouting organization to do badge training, as well as a major provider of financial literacy education for children. So we have a, a lot of potential opportunities in that space. In addition, you know, some of the awards that we've won, I mentioned the National Science Foundation grant. We also were recognized by Fast Company Magazine as a world changing idea in education. This gives a quick overview of some of the exits in the EdTech space. This information was compiled by Reach Capital. Uh, and one that's not on this list that's a little more recent, uh, that's just a little over a year old, uh, was Edmodo, which was acquired for $137 million. They actually had only achieved a million dollars in sales 
that year and had lost $19 million in that million dollars in revenue. So there's a lot of history of ed tech companies selling for significant multipliers, even if they are not profitable and have low revenue, if they're showing good traction. Uh, and, and plenty of examples of companies selling for hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, and lots of deals in this space. So a little bit of where we are and what we're looking for. Uh, there's a significant opportunity in the market that's been created uh, by the schools closing due to COVID-19. And we want to be well positioned to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, we had anticipated doing a Series A uh, next year, uh, early next year. But now we see that the additional capital would help us to be able to fully leverage the opportunity that's been presented to us uh, in order to expand aggressively in the fall. Uh, so we are looking for a lead investor, uh, preferably a lead investor who could not only help us with the, uh, with the smaller round that we're doing now, but also to help us with the Series A that we'll be pursuing next year. Some of the milestones we expect to achieve as a result of that investment, including expanding aggressively in Mexico. The three states that we're in have about 15,000 total schools. So just a thousand of those schools uh, we believe is a very achievable result um, and would dramatically increase our user base. Get an additional footprint in three other countries where we have we've started in Thailand and Taiwan and see a lot of opportunity to expand. And we have opportunities in Latin America and Asia as well. And complete the remaining K-8 to content. While our competitors aren't typically providing content across the board for K-8, to we believe it's a good differentiator and it's a good opportunity right now to present ourselves as a complete tool that can be used either in a classroom or in a remote learning environment should that situation continue. So with that, I'd like to uh, go ahead and open up for any questions that you have. 